Shell texture fur is a method for putting fur on a 3D object without having a million million vertexes involved. So what you have instead is you basically have a series of shells surrounding the object, each of which has a, a version of the fur that is slightly more transparent than the one inside it. If you have already set up a Blender library, then you can just drag Shell Texture Fur V7 into it and jump to this time code in the video. Otherwise, in the labyrinthine tangle you call a file system, create a folder called library or lib if you can't spell that. Assets will do an all. And into it place Insert file name here. Now in Blender, go to Edit, Preferences, File Paths, Asset Library. Click the folder icon next to Path and find that folder again. Now, you can open up the asset library, and there it is! Ready for you to drag it onto an object! And now, if we open up the asset browser, amidst all the other things, we can find shell texture fur that we can just drag onto an object. And it doesn't show up now, let's go to that. Ah! Suddenly, the cube is covered in hair! If we select it, we can then go in here and we have um, this, if you click, if you set up a vertex group and then you click uh, this button and select your vertex group, this cube doesn't currently have a vertex group, that allows you to put hair on some of the object, which is kind of pretty useful. Let me just undo that. Uh, we can also adjust the hair length. We can adjust the hair material. Uh, at the moment, it defaults to hair. I'll look at that in a minute, and then we can just use the number of hair levels. So depending on how uh, thick you want the hair to be, the number of shell levels that it uses. If I then go to the shader editor, um, you know what, we actually, so we can edit this material. Let's just add it here and select hair. And I'm gonna press the uh, home key with the cursor over here, so it shows it here. And we actually use two um, groups for the hair material, in between which we have what the, the texture that is used to separate the hair from the non-hair. In the in this case, it's oh what is that? I never know how to pronounce that. Uh, ver veronoi veronoi texture. And here we also have the very obvious color, so we can change the color of our hair. Of course, we can plug something into that if we want varied hair color. Um, hair texture alpha, which the texture goes into. Hair height, um, the height of the hair. This is an output of this. And hair vertex, which I will get into a moment once we actually start covering uh, vertex groups in this. So hair direction, not something you necessarily need to do. But uh, if you want to have the hair sort of drooping down under gravity for a bit, or even sticking up. Yeah. And if I go back to here, we'll see that. Um, so what I was also going to talk about is vertex group. So I'm just going to actually, I'm just going to mute this, turn this off for a moment. And I'm going to go there. Yep. Uh, vertex group. So what I'm going to do now, so I'm just going to create two loops here. And I'm going to select that. Gym plus vertex groups. So we'll have another vertex groups called hair, and I'm going to assign it to those. So now, if we go into weight paint, we can see that some of this is red, some of this is blue, some of this has this vertex group hair on it. So I'm now going to go back, let's go back to object mode so it's back to normal colors, and we'll turn this on. It's not done anything yet, but if we set hair to vertex group, we can then yeah, click that thing and click hair. We now have hair on half of our cube, but not the other half. If we then go back into materials, hair on vertex. If you want to have a smooth transition between the, um, there's a vertex group, it doesn't have to be on and off. It can be like anywhere in between. So if we then set up an attribute here, search attribute, that's a shift A to add a node in case you were wondering what I was doing here. And we can type in hair here and we put factor into 
hair vertex. And now if we, um, it's just to the yeah, turn around and I want to select those. I want these to be, whoop, let's have that one and loop cut there, loop select there that is, and go back here, here, let's have a weight of 0.1 assign. We now have a hair, more hair there than that is there. If you can see from that orange rectangle, you see this, the mesh for the hair is going all the way out. In fact, we can see it there. But if I go back to there, it's transparent there. So that this is allowing us to have control over having hair of different lengths with on the same object. I mean, you could also, if you wanted to have different colors of hair on the same object, obviously you could do that with that. You could have a vertex color going into that. Oh,